Okay, welcome back to part 10. I can't believe we're already on part 10 of this Stationeers playthrough. So, last time we put some safety features around the gas mixers. Um, we didn't actually put one onto the um, hot gas exhaust. Uh, we're not going to be using the big furnace um, for a little while, so we are going to go back to what we said we would do last time, which is to sort out something bit more sustainable around the water supply. So the problem that we currently have with the water supply is that the only way to warm the ice up once we've crushed it is using the atmosphere of the greenhouse which cools the greenhouse down. Obviously that is not a very clever state to be in. So, um, what we want to do is, first of all we wanted some silicon, which we had to go and smelt the last, uh, mine the last time, and we have smelted some. So we are going to drop that in there, I'll probably best turn the light on since it's getting dark. Let's just check these are all done, nothing left to smelt. Okay. So, we are going to be building an insulated liquid tank which requires steel, copper and silicon. So let's make one of those. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually crush the ice outside. We're going to feed it into um, a pipe warmer um, and into an insulated tank to keep it warm. Um, I haven't quite worked out the arrangement of that we're going to use yet but we will be doing that and once we've got some water which we are keeping at approximately the right temperature we can start to then use heat exchangers if we want to later on to heat and cool areas of the base. Um, that's a whole level of extra sophistication. And the first thing we need to do is to figure out where are we going to put this. So logically we don't want it too far away from the greenhouse but we also don't really want it in the way of the sun so um, we might have to move it a little bit further away just so that it doesn't cast a shadow. Perhaps we'll put it in this corner here. Um, on the other hand we might want to expand some machinery out there. It's always a difficult decision to work out where to site these things. Um, I may have just had a genius idea. We could put it up on the top. Um, now if we do that, where would we run water in? We could run it in potentially down that side. Uh, we'd move the ice crusher out here. Mm, actually this could be a really good solution. Um, let's figure out the best way around. Whoops, that is not the best way around to put it. What on earth are you doing, game? Come on. Um, we don't have a whole lot of choices in terms of which way where we place it. Um, now the complicating factor is that we want to warm the water and store it, um, which means we're going to need to connect it. I think I'm going to connect it this way. Um, and the reason for that is we can then run some pipes through here and down and down that wall somewhere to get them inside but we've got space here on this wall and here for um, whatever we need to do in terms of water pipe setups. Um, now obviously having constructed that we know we're going to need a pipe heater um, so let's build that. Uh, we are going to need an ice crusher, but I might just dismantle the one we've got in there. Um, now what we really want to do is we want to have a liquid valve and we want some insulated pipe on the warm side. Um, and what we actually want to do is to... Oh, I don't quite know what we did there. What we actually want to do is to heat the water and then open the valve and let it mix when it gets to the right temperature. So this is going to need quite a few um, things. So can we build, a, actually we don't want a valve, 
we want a pressure or a pump. So either a regulator or a volume pump. I think we might go with volume pump because we're only going to want to pump it one way. Um, so let's build one of those. And we're going to need Power low. a liquid pipe analyzer because we're going to need to be able to monitor the temperature of the piece of pipe we are heating. This is definitely going to require some new um, IC code writing. Um, we definitely need some liquid pipe. We're also going to want some insulated liquid pipe. Okay, so we've got quite a few pieces here already. Okay, and we've got not much more storage space. Right, so um, I'm going to actually stop that for a minute because I'm not sure how much I'm going to need. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the ice crusher probably somewhere here. Um, let's throw them in here. Um, get all the pieces we need in roughly the right place. This needs a bit of planning. Now this is a new setup that I've not built before. So I'm kind of figuring this out as we go, uh, if, in case you couldn't tell. Um, now we know that the water pipe is going to come out, let's look at this, it's going to come out one square up from ground level on the back of the ice crusher. So if we were to fix that here, Um, now what we need to do, whoops, no, that's not quite going to work. There's going to be some trial and error in this video, more so than probably in some of the others, because um, this really is a new setup for me. Um, just thinking about how we're going to do this, that doesn't fit, does it? We need space to get the pump. So we need the pump there. I think we're actually going to have to move. Uh, we could put the pump on there. No, I think we'll do that. I think what we'll do is we'll move this across here. And then we'll put this here. So the ice crusher will go in there. Um, and the reason for that is I need... Oops. Space for the analyzer also space for the heater which is actually going to be a real pain to wire looking at this um, okay I guess that's how it's going to have to go um, right let's get this cable in because that's definitely going to be a something we're going to have to work around here. Right, so far so good. Now I have to figure out how to get that. Um, I don't know whether we can do this. Oh, it's tight, but I think we can just about... Yes. Look at that. 
that. It is a thing of beauty, if by beauty you mean hideous ugliness. However, what we can do is, I think that's, yes, that is the data port. Um, we can fit that onto there and connect that down there. Right, it's a bit messy. There's a lot of cable. Um, <coughs> however, we can now see that pipe analyzer is working and that heater is working. So what we'll now have to do is to put some um, a chip in here. So we'll, whoops, that was actually completely right the first time. So we'll put that in here. Um, that we space for an IC chip. Um, I'm going to do it on an IC chip because it's probably possible with hardware logic chips, but um, my brain can't work out how, so um, we're just going to write some code to do it. Um, obviously, uh, for some people writing code is uh, the most painful and difficult way to do it. Um, I am actually a programmer by training, so I tend to revert to that as plan A for me. Um, but I uh, appreciate if you are not a programmer type, you may want to come up with other ways to solve the problem. Um, anyway, for now, uh, we're going to come in here. I'm going to dismantle that ice crusher. Uh, then we're going to make an IC chip, and then I'm going to try to figure out how I need to program it. Hopefully, it won't be too difficult. Um, if nothing else, you'll get to see my uh, terrible attempts at figuring out how to code something in MIPS, um, which is um, the greatest programming language ever, I'm sure. Um, Right, deconstruct that with wire cutters. I've just remembered that at least some of this stuff has run out of juice. Um, oh, and I've got all sorts of other stuff on my belt here. Right, this is just a bit of a mess, isn't it? Let's um, let's fling that down there. I don't really care, that can go in there. Um, ankle grinder. Okay, that's good. One sheet there, hand drill, and I think the hand drill is the one that's out of juice. Yes, it is. Really need to recharge this. Because this is starting to get really irritating. Right, okay. So, we will need to think about what we're going to do with that water bottle refiller, but I'm hoping that we're going to bring it in here with some nice temperature-controlled water. I had a moment of panic there where I thought I'd left my helmet open. I don't know why I didn't actually open it at all, but um, I just couldn't remember closing it, which is fine because I didn't open it, but uh, it still made me panic. Right, that's going to fit okay in there. Um, before we do, um, I'm just thinking about how we're going to deal with the gas pipes, which we're going to need. So I think we're going to actually have to pull it one off there anyway and add an extra piece of liquid pipe in order to route the gas pipe because we want the gas pipe to be able to connect in here. Um, and I just don't think, well, I know it's not going to go across there, um, but it is going to go across here. There we go. I mean, it's going to obscure all of this lot, but at least it's going to physically connect. Oops, fell down a hole. Uh, is that in the right place? I can't tell because I'm in a hole. I really need to fix some frames there. Well, no, it wasn't. Okay. Oh! It's all going wrong. Still in the wrong place. Come on. Get it right. There we go. Right, the incredible flying pipes of Mars. Um, okay, let's remove that one. Let's remove that one. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's get out of this hole. Um, let's change this battery while I remember, actually. There we go. That's good. Right. Okay, so 
We're going to need one more liquid pipe. Uh, we will need some more of those. I'll stop that going. Should have brought these from inside, but we're going to need pipes inside anyway, so um, that would be okay. Um, those ones will actually hold me, so we'll just go and connect this now. So I'm going to try and be a bit neater about this and run it around here and then maybe down that way. Um, probably going to want to slide it through there actually, so we'd need one more, but. Well, let's put it in through there for now. That's fine. Okay, right, so um, we're going to need to uh, print an IC housing and an IC. Let's get those going because they take a minute. of insulated pipe. We may as well while we're here. How's that coming along? Close. We'll finish the chip. Um, there we go. I start that going, grab the chip, we'll drop it in here. Um, right, let's uh, build all of this. So we're going to need to connect it. Actually, I'm going to connect the data line because I haven't yet worked out everything I'm going to need to do. Um, so we may as well connect the data line. It's only two extra bits of cable. Um, Oops. Okay. Right, so we now need welding torch and iron sheets. I know we've got all the stuff because we just dismantled it, but uh, we've just got to remember what we need in what order. Okay, that's good. And cable coil. And there we go, okay. So that should be all nicely connected to both water, heater, okay, and uh, not quite to gas, we need one more. Uh, okay, that's unfortunate. I'm gonna pinch one off here. Um, in fact, I'm going to pinch that one there if I can. If I can make it a highlight. But I probably can't. But I can do that one. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Through the glass. How skillful. Um, I don't know why I put that away. I need that anyway. Um, there we go. Let's paint this while we're here. Okay, we should actually, I'm just thinking about this, probably be wise to move the one-way valve to be on the other side. So we'll do that and put that in there. There we go. Okay, so anything coming out of here will flow that way. That will stop it backing up. 
a lot of this we probably won't need anymore um, because obviously this was to take the gas from the indoor ice crusher and connect it up we've now done that with a much shorter run um, but we'll deal with that in a minute okay now for the fiddly bit we're gonna have to actually let's um, see whether we've got that icy housing yet yes we should have nope what happened Did I not make an IC housing? I thought I did. Hmm. I was certain I'd press the button on that. Must have forgotten. Okay. No. Nope. Okay. Well, that's fine. I can get on with that. Right. Okay. Now let's think about this. So what we are going to do is we are going to switch this first of all to the programming and then we are going to import because I want to completely empty it. Let's close all these windows, get them out of the way. We're going to go into edit mode. Okay, so we're going to start off. Let's put some hashes like this. A hash is uh, a comment in MIPS, so uh, this is quite a nice way of just visually uh, being able to put a bit of a header on there, which will be useful to us later on to remember what it does. So this is going to be a water warmer. Uh, and I do usually like to put on here uh, a little copyright, mostly just so I know when I wrote the code, honestly, I'm not that fussed about copyright. Um, if you wish to use the code, feel free. Um, I would appreciate um, if you give me credit for it, um, rather than passing it off as your own. But other than that, I am fine with it. Right, okay, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna set some aliases up. So we are gonna alias, um, a device to the um, the heater. Oops, I've done that wrong, haven't I? We're going to alias heater to device zero. We're going to alias. So I'm going to try and talk and type. Um, we're going to alias the pump to uh, device one. We're going to alias the pipe analyzer. I can't be bothered to type that in full. So no, it doesn't. Why is that? Oh no, okay. Uh, onto device two. Okay, so that's where we're going to connect our um, connections. I think actually what we might also do is alias the tank onto um, device three because we might want to measure the tank temperature. So what we're going to do here, <coughs> we've, we'll do that at the start of the program. That just means there's an easier way we can refer to these things, um, which makes it a bit easier. Um, so I'll leave a couple of blank lines in case we need to insert anything, but we're going to put in a label here called loop because we're going to need to do this um, each time and we're going to jump back up to the top um, after each tick. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to load um, from the pipe the temperature. We're also... Oh, we're going to load from the pipe the temperature. We need to actually put that somewhere. So if you look at the function reference, I'll show you this because actually this is quite useful. Um, the thing is with MIPS is there are lots, particularly when you get into some of these um, commands, which are very similar. We've now got the annoying problem that we're going to have critical power right while I'm trying to do coding. It's not conducive to um, really concentrating. However, right, if we look up L here, what we're going to do is we're going to load the um, into register r device variable so the bit i missed was i actually forgot to say into a register called r0 you can use register called r0 r1 r2 r3 r4 all the way up to r9 and then there is r a um, and there is actually also r b but um, i would not advise using anything above r a um, because it's used internally uh, unless you really know what you're doing with MIPS and RA is often used as the jump to point so really be cautious about using anything above R9 um, so um, we just need to be a bit thoughtful about how many registers we've got however that's going to load the pipe temperature into um, the register R0 and we're also going to measure the pipe pressure because if there is no pressure in the pipe we're not going to want to waste power running the um, running the pump um, right so what we need to do now is um, we need to, to think about a couple of things um, we need to think about if the pressure uh, if there is no pressure in the pipe we don't want to do anything so we want to turn everything off um, if the pipe has pressure then if the temperature is um, 
around about 20 and we're going to heat it up from cold so I think we're going to say if it's over 20 then we want to turn on the pump and then finally if uh, it has pressure and it hasn't met the criteria of being over 20 then actually what we do want to do in that case is we want to make sure the pump is turned off and we want to make sure the heater is turned on um, so that's how it's going to work um, so what we need to do is to use those two variables um, r1 and r0 um, to um, figure out actually what setting we want to do there's one other thing a reason I connected up the tank we might want to build some extra conditional logic in there and try and get a bit clever and say actually if the tank is colder than 20 you can add hotter water um, I'm not sure quite how I'm going to do that calculation yet because we need to know the pressure and other things and the volume in the tank so um, we'll just keep it simple to start with and try to construct this um, notwithstanding that my suit power is probably going to cut out part way through this um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to say um, if the um, temperature is greater than 20 degrees and I'm going to assume it's probably going to be Kelvin there's a little bit of trial and error in that for gases it is Kelvin um, I assume the same for it's, it's true for liquid but we'll find out um, so we're going to see whether it's over 20 and we're going to um, we, we already know if the pressure is over zero because um, we can just use the pressure directly but we're going to set two uh, values so we're going to use the um, uh, SGT um, commands to, so, to find out so what that says is register is one if a is greater than b otherwise it's zero so what we're going to do is we can say SGT so we're going to put the result of this calculation into R2 and what we're going to do is what we want to, what we want to say here is is the temperature which is R0 greater than and we want it to be at 20 uh, Celsius which is 293 Kelvin okay so what that's going to say is R2 will be 1 if R0 is greater than 293 Kelvin otherwise it will be 0 and what we can then do is we can then use the AND command and we can say set R3 to be the result of doing an AND on R2 Temperature and low. R1 and that's my warning that I need to change my suit battery um, so I will have to come back to this but the reason we're going to do this is we're going to say this is going to be turned on if the temperature is above 293 and there is also pressure now at that point I'm going to have to frustratingly stop and just come over here flick out that battery temperature low okay and then we'll go back to the edit so at this point in the code R3 will be set to 1 if the temperature is greater than 293 Kelvin, so 20 degrees C, and if the pressure is greater than 0. So if there's any pressure in the pipe and, the, and it's warm enough, then we're going to set R3. So that's going to be our indicator that it's safe to uh, pump the water into the tank. Um, I think actually I'm going to put a bit of a safety measure on this because I think I'm actually going to define a top limit as well um, which is going to stop it from triggering so I'm going to put an SLT which is the opposite of SGT it's less than you can do less than or equal to which would be LE and greater than or equal to would be GE um, and we're going to at the moment we've still got some registers so I'm going to keep using some more registers so we're going to put um, R4 if R0 is less than and we don't want to pump in water that is above let's say 30 degrees because that feels like we could start to damage the plants so if it's less than 30 degrees R4 will be set so if we then and and we're going to do something a little bit confusing if you're not used to programming here what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to take that R4 and we're going to and it with R3 so at this point the R4 register will be set to 1 if it was already set to 1 because the temperature was less than 30 degrees and if R3 was set to 1 which means the temperatures are greater than 20 degrees and there's pressure in the pipe. So at this point R4 will be 1 if we want to turn on the pump because 
that will mean that there's there's some liquid and the temperature is in the 20 to 30 degree range so that's going to be our key to turn the pump on in all other circumstances the pump will be turned off now the next thing we want to do is we want to figure out do we need to turn on the heater so what we can actually do there um, is we can um, treat it as the opposite of um, whether or not the temperature is greater than 293 um, and we can say turn it on the only problem with that is it's going to turn off as soon as it reaches 293 and what that means is potentially it could hit the threshold and it could then the next tick drop just below the threshold turn back on turn back off turn back on turn back off and it would never actually quite be on for long enough so we're actually going to um, set um, a, a value for um, it being slightly colder than that um, and I'm actually going to say if um, and we're going to put that in the R5 register I'm being a bit wasteful with register numbers here I could have used fewer but we'll do it this way for now because it's a little bit clearer if R0 is less than and I'm going to say 295 so that gives a two degree overlap so there's a temperature point with a two degree overlap where um, potentially it's at the coldest end of what you'd want to pump in and it will keep the heater on um, but now what we're going to do is we're going to and that R5 with itself and with the pressure in R1 so if there's no pressure we don't want to turn on the pump because that's just a waste of energy so now R5 will be turned on if there's pressure in the pipe and the temperature in the pipe is less than 22 degrees C 295 Kelvin so we're going to use that to drive the pump so now we need to actually output these two settings so what we're going to do is we're going to save and in fact let me just pull up here just to show you the save is basically the opposite of the load command we used at the start I forgot my way around the alphabet that was particularly clever wasn't it um, so what we're going to do is we're going to save to the device called pump uh, whoops this is where we need to make sure we actually do this right around to the device called heater we're going to save the value in R5 to its on so it will turn on if R5 is 1 it will turn off if R5 is 0 and we're going to do the same here with save to the pump R4 also to on so that will turn the pump on if R4 is 1 and it will turn it off if it's 0 so then what we're going to do is we're going to execute a yield command because we must always do that and then we are going to jump back up to here and we can use the label loop to do that so I have no idea whether or not I've done this right um, but we're going to give it a go so the first thing I'm going to do I'm just going to save this to the library I'm going to create new I'm going to call this water warmer and I'm going to say warm liquid to 20 C and then pump and that's now saved you can see that's in there so then we'll then confirm that we will export that to the chip and we will take it over oops we'll have to go and get the IC housing which should be in here by now yes did actually print it this time genius um, so let's go and rig this up um, and then we will figure out how much I've screwed that up whoops uh, I'm not quite sure what happened there it's sort of fell off the edge I think um, right there we go so that goes in there and that goes in there so we quickly flick it on so that it flashes an error and that tells us what all of these need to be set to um, and now we get the screwdriver okay so this needs to be set to this is the heater so this is liquid pipe. oops did I just jump past it liquid pipe analyzer no okay maybe it's under P for pipe heater um, pipe heater liquid that's a sort of annoying thing that you just think can you please standardize it and again if the devs are watching can you please standardize it 
Uh, right, okay, and we'll go this way through here. Um, this is actually quite tedious when you've got a lot. You can split up your um, data circuits, which is helpful. Um, but uh, yeah, sadly, you just have to scroll through everything. Um, it actually defaults to going in reverse alphabetical order as well, which just, just seems a bit backwards to me, but there we go. Uh, that's the pipe analyzer. Um, and we did also say we'd connect the tank, didn't we? So um, let's, uh, let's go look. Not that we're doing anything with this tank, so it's not really the end of the world, but insulated liquid tank small. Okay, and there's no device alias to uh, D4 or to D5. Incidentally, you can also alias the housing, which you'll see is on a state zero. Um, that's actually, um, the device for that is actually called DB. Um, it's not very well documented, but you can do it. It's a way of getting a seventh input or output setting um, onto the IC device, although it's a bit hacky and uh, there are a few constraints. Right, let's turn it on and look at that. Amazing, it's already flashing an error. So this is how we can start to debug it. So we can see it says error incorrect variable at line 24. Now, what I generally say to people is um, actually take it back and debug it so that you know you're doing the right one. But I'm gonna debug it in situ. Um, so we'll call that, that and it should be on the same circuit as the computer so we should be able to let's close that um, this gets a little bit confused sometimes when you've got to, no it doesn't like it once you go below three lines it doesn't it's very very difficult to make it select no it's just not having it there we go i've done it right okay import Always make sure once you've selected the device that you're importing from that you hit the import. Okay, so the error that we had was um, on line 24. So um, we were trying to use the on against liquid heater. So it's possible that the pipe heater um, does not respond to that. So what we can do is we pull up the uh, stationpedia here um, with F1. We can actually search for um, pipe heater liquid and if we open this up what we can see down here is what logic it allows so on is a read write so that should be okay um, obviously if you try to for example write to something like power or require power prefab hash or even error um, their read only you'll definitely get an error um, this should be working um, so it's possible that I've either misread the error or forgotten what I was doing um, or actually quite likely, no, it's much more simple than that. I'm just an idiot and I've written the code wrong. Um, it's completely clear. It's in front of me here. S device variable register. S device variable register compared to what I had written, which was S device register variable. So, you know, just check the instructions um, and um, try not to do that. Uh, let's resave that, overwrite it, confirm that. Remember, we need to re-export it to the chip. That will restart the program. And that's one of the reasons I generally try to uh, debug it um, over by the computer because that has actually run perfectly nicely now and it appears to be running but if it was running okay and there was some sort of weirdness with the way i'd set it up potentially we could be causing all sorts of problems um you know we might be turning the wrong devices on or off or anything now if i test this in theory turning this on it should yes it does immediately turns itself off and that's happening because it's hard to see because of that pipe, but because the pressure in here is zero, right? So similarly, if I try and turn this on, it also just turns itself off. So the first test, the pressure test is definitely working. Now we're going to have to go find some ice and crush it. Um, and then once we've done that, um, we'll figure out how to replumb the inside and connect up um, some water bottle fillers again uh, but then from there we should be in a good state um, to 
connect up a proper hydroponics setup with water at a predictable temperature. So I remembered we'd seen some ice over here a while ago. Um, okay, that looks like that's all there is. That's quite a big canyon. I don't really want to fall in there. Um, okay, that'll do for now. Um, Ah, got stuck on the machines. Right, okay, so if this has worked, it should be possible. Throw that in there, and we should see the water pressure going up. We can also see, look at that temperature, it's really cold, 230, 240 Kelvin, really cold. Um, and one of the things we could do, we could actually enhance that chip because we are connected to this. We could actually force it to not turn on the crusher if the pipe's in danger of bursting. So that would be another little safety feature we could think about later because um, we're already measuring the pressure in the pipe. We could just override the turn on of this um, if it's going to exceed a bursting point. However, in the meantime, let's see what happens. You can see the heat has turned itself on, in fact already automatically and if I turn it off it turns itself back on so that's now working um, and if we look at the temperature here it's uh, it's cold uh, but it's creeping up now I bet if I turn this on it should turn yes it does turn straight back off so I'm sure a little bit of water got through in that um, very brief period of time um, and it was very very cold but you'll see it was only 15 moles that got through it's hardly any tool as compared to um, what's sat down here 622 which you can see is warming up actually quite quickly um, so I think I'm reasonably comfortable we can kind of leave that unattended um, and what I'm going to do now I'm just going to lay in this bit of pipe where I was originally going to um, So if I'll be super careful using the wrench anywhere near frames or windows or anything else, well not so much windows to be fair, but anywhere near frames where you can pressure inside. There we go, we'll drop that down there. Okay, so um, the tank shouldn't be filling up, it should just have a very small amount of very cold water in it. What we're going to go and do now is we're going to move the plumbing inside where we're going to need it and we can also rip out that waste gas line as well while we're at it which will obviously make life a bit easier in here um, so um, let's do that let's do that let's get the wrench See, I'm being much more careful than I normally am when applying wrenches to pipes because one falls move and we will rip open our hab. Okay, we're right on here, I can just go up there. Okay, good. Now, similarly, that can come apart there. I actually don't want that radiator. Um, we may or may not find another use for it, but for now that can come off. Look at that, there we go. Much tidier, so that can throw through there. And then what we'll do is we'll bring this in here. Um, actually, before we do anything else, let's... Uh, Very neat and tidy the way they landed. Sort of expected it to uh, throw them in all directions. Um, there we go, let's have it like that, nice and neat and tidy. And then we'll put that in there, we'll put that in there, and we'll run that one straight down. And that's going to run in under the floor here. Um, it should be clear of that, so then we'll run it in under the floor around the edge here and we can use that to drive some proper industrial hydroponics 
In the meantime, let's um, put that one in there. Whoops. Um, the case for tidying up in here continues to build. Um, let's uh, have a little drink of water since I've got some here and drop it back in there and you'll see that's still too cold so that's not refilling. However, let's see what we've got here now. This will actually slightly warm up because the insulated pipe on the outside stops it getting any colder but the uninsulated pipe in here will slowly transfer some heat. You can see it's going very slowly but it hasn't got a radiator on so that's all it's going to do and that's how I want it because I don't mind a little bit of heat transfer this water's going to be broadly at 20 degrees um, but I don't want to uh, risk chilling the hab back down again um, we've already killed one potato crop although arguably um, it will act as an excellent buffer because actually that water at 20 degrees should stabilize the temperature in here um, so later on perhaps we'll do that um, in fact, the more I think about it, the more I think it's actually probably a genius idea, but um, a bit like central heating in a house. Anyway, in the meantime, um, did I remember to close my helmet? No, I didn't. Let's close the helmet. Let's lock the helmet. Let's get rid of the user interface for the helmet so I don't accidentally kill myself. Um, and then let's go back outside. Um, and we are going to put together some hydroponics units. Okay, so in the meantime, the water on the outside here um, is now up at 265 Kelvin, so it's definitely moving in the right direction. It's still far too cold, but it is going the right way. Let's tidy that up. Uh, oh, okay, let's not, because there's actually nowhere to put it. Let's just throw it there then and shut those. Okay, um, so what we are going to do now is we are going to go over here and we are going to build some more liquid pipes. We're going to need some more iron. going to need some hydroponics trays which use quite a lot of iron. Now I'm going to set up two of those. Um, I could probably set up more but um, actually we're going to need more pipe than that. Um, but I'm going to set up uh, actually, no, I'm going to set up three. The reason I'm going to set up three is that actually later on I'm going to automate the hydroponics um, using the Harveys, um, which is really cool. Um, it gets to be a really complicated setup with shoots, um, and in terms of the electronics, setting up more than three is a nightmare. Setting up more than three um, with the chutes and the sorters takes up a huge amount of space as well. well. We certainly haven't got room in there to do more than that. I'm not even sure we've got room for that many. Although we'll also have to add an extra layer of height to the roof to do this. So uh, there's quite a bit of work to do to get that to uh, happen. But um, just thinking ahead and planning around what we're going to do. Um, but between now and then, that should be enough that we can grow some crops um, fairly sustainably, although we'll still have to manually go in and harvest them, um, but that should get us going. So, um, how's this water looking before we go inside? Uh, 272, it's almost reached freezing point, uh, which is good, but it's certainly warming up. Um, so, hopefully, not too long, it will hit 20 degrees. Um, yeah, there we go, it's definitely going up, look at that. Okay. So let's go back inside, cancel the pressurised because I'm lazy, I have everything fly in my face and wish I hadn't cancelled the pressurise. Uh, right, okay, now, um, this portable air scrubber that was never used is actually becoming a bit of a pain. Let's throw it in the corner over here, go on, get in the corner. Um, 
we should probably think about actually dumping this uh, oxygen cylinder now. Oh, where on earth did it go? Oh, okay. Um, uh, please stop doing that. I'm just trying to pick you up. Um, and we should probably... Um, thank you. Um, just extract the oxygen from that um, into the main system now. Um, it's not really doing us any favours. Um, being in here is bulky. Um, and I think we'll get more value by just putting it into the main system. It's just one less thing to worry about. It's useful backup. I keep it around until we've got a really good atmospheric setup running because um, you can recharge the oxygen bottle directly from it. Um, and in early game, it's the only way to do that. Um, but I think we're past that point by quite some way now. So um, I think we'll go ahead and get rid of it. Um, however, for that, let's get this set up. So I'm going to take these across here. Um, I didn't quite expect to have to use so many, honestly. I hadn't really thought about how big this was. Um, anyway, that'll be fine. Throw everything around. It's not like we need the... Oh, no, we do need the seeds. Um, right, OK, we're going to put that there. Um, OK, I think I'm going to want one more. And then I'm going to want one there. Go that way. OK, and then what we'll do is we'll put... Uh, I probably actually don't want that there. Um, I'm almost certain I'm going to end up having to move these around later on. Um, but we're going to put these in. Notice I've moved this to the hydroponics device rather than the hydroponics tray. The difference is the device setting. Um, and there are... Um, it says three settings, but there are actually only two. Um, but the device setting also has a sensor port, which we can use um, later on to read the state of the crop. So we'll need that when we set up some harveys. Now I'm leaving two spaces between each one. Um, I think that will make it easier to set it up later. Uh, and I'm going to connect them like this. You can just, if you're running simple trays, just daisy chain them. Um, but as I say, I, I've got half a mind here to how we're going to automate this later on. Um, and I want to be able to set that up. Um, so then the other thing we'll do is we will fit some cable to here. Um, because we will want to be able to read the status of those trays for some logic later on. And once we start putting things in, it just gets a little bit more fiddly to move around. So um, that's connected. Appreciate it doesn't really go anywhere at the moment. Um, that's kind of OK. Um, right, and basically what we've got in here at the moment is just a bit of a big mess. But um, once the um, tank does its thing, um, we've got a very small amount of very cold water at the moment. But um, we should expect quite soon um, for the temperature of the um, tank to, or the temperature of the uh, pipe to get up far enough that this actually then uh, drops the 20 degree water into the pipe and this all fills up quite quickly. Um, that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen while we're in here though. Um, and probably waiting for it to is going to get kind of boring. So uh, I'm going to lay this back down here. Obviously, we're going to put floor grating across the whole floor in here uh, later on. Um, but in the short term, I'm just trying to do the minimum that we need in order to uh, be able to keep this stuff exposed because we're going to want to connect it up later on. Um, I think I might just connect that wiring, though, because uh, that will just make life easier later. So let's do this. Oh, or not. Um. As with gas pipes, you can run cables across straight pipes. There we go. And then that's connected. It's not the neatest bit of wiring, uh, but it does the job. Um, let's be honest, there's not much in this hab that actually could be called neat, is there? Um, right. Gather up some of this wreckage. 
Um, we need to start being a bit more disciplined about what we do with things in here because once we start building, I'm just going to have to throw those out there, they can be disposed of. Um, once we start um, building things in here, oops, hand drill, um, it's just going to get to be a big mess. Right, I'm going to deconstruct that because it's just in the way. Um, I will leave it in here just in case we have an emergency of some sort, but it's taking up a lot less space like that. Um, right, okay, so um, now you see I could, if I thought this was likely to fill up any time soon, um, I could plant those potatoes, but um, we're still not there. And well, I'll show you what will happen. We've got quite a few potatoes. If I take a potato here and I plant it, you'll see. Oh, actually, no, it says the water's at an unfavourable temperature, and you'll see it's taking some damage. Um, if that gets down to zero, um, it will die. So the question is, will that get to zero before or after the uh, water pump runs? But um, I don't know. In the meantime, let's do this. Of course, we've still got this portable hydroponics, and we're going to keep that as a bit of a backup for a little while. Um, because what I don't want is to get into a situation where we can't grow any food. Although at the moment, obviously, we're in a pretty good state. We're growing food much faster than we're using it. There we go. So all of these are, are looking, uh, shall we say, a little sickly. Um, we'll put the uh, potato in the microwave. Uh, I don't know why it turns into a bowl, but it does. Um, we can make a jack potato that way in case we want it in a minute. Um, there we go. Um, so, I think the next thing to do, um, conscious that we are coming up to the hour, but the next thing to do um, now is probably to get some more flooring down in here, bring in a locker and actually tidy up a little bit. Um, and um, then we can start thinking about what components we'll need for putting in some Harveys next time. Um, one thing it will need is a raise the whole roof by another block. Um, so that's going to need quite a few more walls. Actually, I may as well take the three we've got here while I'm thinking about it. But we're going to need to go up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But of course, also on this side as well, 10, 11, 12. But it, we'll then have to obviously add nine on top uh, before unsealing this so that we don't uh, lose all of our precious atmosphere. Um, so um, that is going to be um, 21 in total. I've got three so we're going to have to make another 18 bits of wool and iron sheet and I have actually got enough glass still. Um, anyway that's um, the next thing to think about probably. Um, in the meantime let's see if we can actually manage to get out of here without crushing ourselves to death in the airlock. Um, oh, look at the inside of the tank, I can see through it. Um, I'm not daring to touch the handle on that tank um, for a minute because I think if I do it in a confined space, it's going to be instant death. Oh, I think they must put kangaroos in these. Um, there is something seriously wrong with them. Right, okay, so let's move this over here. Um, of course, we don't have any way to empty that at the moment, so um, we probably need to think about that as well. Let's just quickly put together a um, tank connector um, and we'll need a pump. It's a bit quick and dirty but um, we're just going to connect that straight up. Uh, my main concern now is have we actually got any more cable? We actually haven't. We've finally used it all up. Um, so let's quickly make some more cable. Um, I'm sure we can figure out some way to connect it without using too much, but uh, we may as well just burn some copper. Um, and also look at the state of the power again. Um, this is a constant battle. Um, right, so what we'll do is we're going to connect this um, over here. Uh, it's a bit of a temporary measure, but I don't really want it somewhere that's completely in the way. Actually, I can put it right over the end here. This is genius. Um, 
Let me just stick it in there. Perfect. Um, not quite perfect. I did that wrong. Um, but the idea is still good. Um, and the reason it's not quite perfect is I need enough space here for the uh, volume pump um, and more importantly the wiring for the volume pump. Um, let's just put that in first. It'll be easy to see what we're doing. Um, so that could plug straight on there actually. Um, okay fine. Well in that case let's do that. And that minimal piping required. Um, not that we're exactly short of materials but nonetheless Whoa, interesting bit of jumping there. We'll spray that, that gets rid of that. I realise we haven't got enough to do the pipe as well. Right, what we haven't got is enough to connect this, but whoops, we're not too far off. We're in fact, we're one off, of course, always, always, always. Um, now, let's put the, just going to get the cable. Nice, right, okay. Let's not waste power when it's uh, things are looking a little bit low. Let's get rid of this. Oh. Right, okay, let's drop that on there and hope it stays. Okay, and then we use the wrench to connect it to the connector and then that won't blow away. Um, that can just go up there and then this here can be connected boom there we go and then we should see the pressure dropping there and we should also see the oxygen turn on here because this should be filling up rapidly well it's pretty much emptying as fast as it can um, once that's down to zero we'll turn the volume pump off and then that's that tank dealt with. Okay, and I think that's probably enough for this video at that point because we are at about another hour. Um, so next time we will raise the roof on the greenhouse and we'll start looking at some um, automation. Um, but for this time, um, I'm going to just let this finish emptying uh, it's going over so slowly now. That's close enough for me. Save some electricity. Um, I'm going to come over here. Of course, we're using lots of power um, with this uh, pipe heater. Um, let's see how this water's looking. 293 is so close. Um, perhaps we'll wait until that finishes um, and watch the uh, water system in its full glory. Um, although. Um, it does seem to be struggling to actually heat up now. I'm wondering whether the ambient temperature is low enough. Yeah, I think because it's so cold outside, it's actually losing heat um, faster than it can. Because if you look at the outside temperature, it really is dropping quite quickly. Um, and I think the pipe is now losing heat faster than the heater can heat it, uh, which is a shame. Um, yeah, it's definitely not it's just uh, stopping cooling down so fast so um, I'm going to turn this solid generator on though because um, we are going to run out of power in a minute otherwise um, no one wants that um, it does at least mean I can put that away uh, close that um, throw that in there and come on let's see if we can do this or are we going to come back and you'll have to tune in next time to see whether or not we can actually get the temperature over the magic 293. Um, yeah that's still falling um, so I think that's going to have to wait now until the morning um, unless we cheat slightly. So let's cheat slightly um, so that we can just finish it on this video. Um, and let's just change that 293 to 290. Uh, it's a little bit cool, but I think that will be okay. Um, and I'm going to 
confirm those changes and I'm going to export them. There we go, and you can see that heater's still running because if you remember that cuts off at 295, but the pump is running as well. Um, so it should be starting to empty out the water. Um, whoa, here comes a storm as well. It seems to be perfect timing to finish. Right, the uh, heater has flicked off and the pump has flicked off. The water is at 16.58 degrees and I think we're going inside to hide from the storm until next time. So I hope you've found that useful and interesting um, and I hope you'll join me next time when we will um, find out whether or not we can get out of here in, after the storm and realise how many solar panels I should have patched up um, and uh, hopefully get the hydroponics working properly but in the meantime the potatoes are actually growing and we can harvest some seeds so uh, we've done good work today we've got proper hydroponics set up working um, we can now um, get refilled liquid bottles um, and we've got a reasonable amount of water at a decent temperature in those pipes 244 moles that's quite a lot that will keep us going for a while um, at 16.68 degrees so I suspect it will cool slightly oh, it's actually warming slightly that's a surprise um, I thought it would cool slightly um, but um, we might add this on here now um, just to line it up with the hab temperature um, it shouldn't have too much effect because it's already coming in very close to the external temperature of 20 degrees. So um, there we go. Anyway, that's it for this time. I hope you have enjoyed it and found it interesting and I'll see you on the next video.